Um, we see a lot of firework related injuries. Um, the most devastating injuries that we see are those um, to the hands um, and to the eyes. And occasionally we see very severe injuries and, and we've had deaths related to fireworks in the past. Fireworks and alcohol certainly don't mix. That's a big um, portion of the injuries we see are related to people who are intoxicated and just don't have the wherewithal to um, use them properly. Most of the injuries we see are, are really avoidable. There are people that are trying to push their limits um, with the fireworks, trying to do things that are um, you know, inherently dangerous, but they wanna try it anyway. And then, and then unfortunately they get badly injured. So most of the injuries that we see are from a couple of different types of fireworks. Um, the explosive um, uh, kind of loud, uh, you know, type of fireworks like an M80, something like that. Um, the other injuries that we see come from shells um, where people have believed that it's, you know, a dud and not gone off and then they approach it or the, the fuse is partially, you know, eroded or doesn't work properly and they try and light it. Having since seen so many terrible injuries over the years um, and, um, and knowing that these are injuries that are really avoidable and that, you know, terribly affect people's lives, um, you know, going through a life with a bad hand injury or, you know, with a bad eye injury um, really changes your, your whole world, can't work and, and, you know, maybe can't take care of your family as well. And so I'm biased. I, I definitely recommend that people go and watch the fireworks. Um, and uh, if they're, um, you know, want to use the fireworks themselves, just um, don't be cavalier about it. These are dangerous things and, um, you know, use common sense and, uh, you know, avoid the children uh, playing with them and, you know, avoid mixing alcohol with anything dangerous. The 4th of July is around the corner and today marks the first day of fireworks sales despite certain areas banning the use of them. Officials in Snohomish County are warning residents about where it is illegal to set them off as well as changes coming to the county next year. Come as Karina Vargas has the latest. Firework sales have begun for the 4th of July holiday. But ahead of those celebrations, officials in Snohomish County are warning about setting off fireworks where it's illegal. So if you want to go enjoy the fireworks, you know, please do, but find a place that has uh, fireworks that are doing it with permits and an area that where they're allowed. This is a map where the use of fireworks are banned. That includes areas like Edmonds, Mill Creek, Shoreline, Everett and Linwood. While the sale of fireworks is currently allowed, earlier this year, the Snohomish County Council approved a new rule that that will ban the sale of fireworks in those areas where it's illegal to set off. Over the years, we've raised several million dollars in all the stands that we've done in tents as well. Um, so we'll have a pretty big impact on our nonprofit uh, sales for future years. Jeremy Mikalski says it's upsetting to hear about the ban and the impact this will have on them. He said a complete ban is not the answer. It impacts us completely and also the statistics prove people will just go to the places where the fireworks are illegal, purchase those and those are dangerous. Como Ford drew drone was over Linwood where setting off fireworks is illegal in any county park, state park or federal land. And it's also illegal on public property, including streets, sidewalks or schools. Police said they will be out enforcing the ban and ask residents to only call 911 when there's an immediate threat to life or property. But if you have any sort of like noise complaint or complaint of illegal fireworks being discharged in your area, call our non-emergency line. Uh, we're asking people to do this just to keep 911 open. Police say those who are caught setting off fireworks illegally could face a $500 fine. In Snohomish County, Karina Vargas, Como News. Welcome back. Let's dive right into the deep end. The 4th of July is this week. That means you'll likely hear fireworks from shows and in your neighborhoods. But this time of year is stressful for most pets. Tyra is in the Ark Lounge this morning with Dr. Kelly Wood with Lean Animal Hospital in West Seattle. Tell us a little bit more how we can prepare our pets for this holiday. Yeah, Holly, those fireworks, you can't possibly go without hearing them, right? It's almost inevitable. Dr. Wood, thank you so much for joining us today. Happy to be here. Of course. You just said you had a dog. You have a dog. Yes. And um, he hates the fireworks. Absolutely hates them. <laughs> Why is that? Why do fireworks cause so much stress for our pets? 
I feel like it triggers their fight or flight response. You know, we can't explain to them why there are these loud booms mm -hmm. and that it's actually something we're all excited about. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really terrifying for them with their heightened sense of hearing and, and smell, even if they're right next to the fireworks. So I think it's just very overwhelming. Yeah, definitely a lot of stimulation. That's mm -hmm. just not positive stimulation, though. Yeah, yeah, at least not for them. <laughs> so most experts say, OK, well, keep your dogs indoors or your, mm -hmm. any pet indoors while those fireworks are happening but mm -hmm. what if your pet needs to be outdoors are there something is there something the owner can do so that the pet is still able to be outside but protected yeah absolutely so um, making sure your pet is microchipped is really mm -hmm. important and making sure that microchip information is up to date a lot of people don't realize that um, and uh, making sure they are wearing a collar with some identification information you know try to check the weaker spots in your backyard where your pet might get out in a panic um, you know, things like that. If you're having people over, you try to get everybody involved in keeping right. the pet, you know, safe and contained um, and coming up with a plan ahead of time mm -hmm. so you're not in a bad situation. Microchip, okay, gotta get that done. Yeah. And so we've already identified those fireworks. They could be loud, noisy, just completely horrible for the pets. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some things people can do inside the house to sort of mitigate that? Yeah, so trying to maintain your normal routine as much as you can so that they don't pick up on your sense of anxiety. Mm. Um, trying to have kind of a safe, darker area, maybe even some white noise, and um, you know, planning ahead using things like thunder shirts or you know, pheromone releasing collars to kind of help create a sense of calm. And then, um, you know, if it's appropriate, talk to your vet and see if there are some sedatives or you know, something to help reduce their anxiety that you can use for the next couple of days. I was going to ask you that. Would you recommend medications or even some natural remedies? Yeah, I would say it's very pet dependent. Okay. Some will just sleep straight through the fireworks and not care. But if you know your dog or cat is an anxious, you know, sort of friend, um, <laughs> then definitely talking to your vet and seeing mm -hmm. what would be the best option is a great idea. There are some more kind of over the counter natural remedy type options that can be really helpful. Um, and then you can always just see how it goes. If it doesn't go well, then we'll try next year and make some adjustments until we figure out what's going to help reduce their stress. That makes sense, though. It's pet specific. So you got to just consult the doctor first before yeah, you give yeah. them anything. See what medications they're mm -hmm. on, see what their behaviors are like, and um, kind of make a plan that's tailored to that pet. Are there any things that uh, the owner should be looking out for in terms of prevention ahead of time when it comes to injury or illness ahead of the 4th of July? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, as much as we hope to not have to go to the ER yeah. during this next couple of days, um, you know, look them up ahead of time. Figure out who's close to you in case of a bad emergency. Um, you know, keep in mind that a really anxious animal might even run through glass, oh, which no. is really scary. So, you know, trying to mitigate that and create, like I said, a safe space for the animal um, and have a plan in place in case the worst does happen. And what kind of dog do you have and what is your plan <laughs> going to be for for July morning or night? Yeah, so uh, he's a mutt. He's a okay. chihuahua mix. <laughs> I got him from the shelter a couple years ago, so he's got his own little anxiety issues. Um, but I have him on a more chronic anxiety medication for his stressors, but um, I'll give something called gabapentin and trazodone the night before um, and then the morning of and kind of two hours before I'm expecting the fireworks to start. It's hard because in Seattle, we love fireworks, right. apparently, yeah. compared to everywhere else <laughs> I've lived. Um, so trying to get a head start on it so we're not always playing catch up, you know, when the fireworks start, mm -hmm. they're probably already in too heightened of a sense of stress to get yeah. as much of a response. So that's usually my strategy is trying to get ahead of the, the loud booms. Yeah, absolutely. I like that night before plan and the two hour before plan too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Wood, for, for sharing all that information. Super helpful. Yeah. Yeah, happy Thank you. And Holly, you um, just got a dog mm -hmm. last year, so this will be uh, your dog's first 4th of July experience with you and your kids. <laughs> yeah, I know. So we'll see how she does. I like uh, the doctor's advice and the yeah. strategy, and I'm going to start thinking about my own strategy. I don't really know how Koa's going to do because she hasn't been exposed to to fireworks yet. She did not like the pressure washer mm. um, when the workers were on our neighbor's house pressure washing the roof. She did not like that noise, but that's not even a loud boom. So we'll <laughs> see. I'm going to create a safe place for her. Good that's luck for sure. to Koa, for yes. sure. <laughs> Thank you both Thanks. so much.